All right. So I've got another guest today. I want to welcome him out for uh, being willing to tell about his experience overcoming pornography in just one session, which is pretty amazing. One hypnotherapy session, right? We did a couple other sessions too, but um, say hi so everyone knows you're here. Hello. Hey. <laughs> All right. And uh, thanks again for being out. Uh, so yeah. tell me... <clears throat> Uh, a little bit about your history, when you were first exposed, how long you struggled with it, what that was like, and you just kind of start at the beginning. Okay, yeah. Um, I was exposed probably when I was about 10 years old. Um, just happened upon some, some pornography. Um, it was literature, so I kept it uh, for a little while. And then um, didn't have any issues maybe for a few more years until I was probably about 13 or 14. Um, and that's what I started viewing pornography. Um, I went to quite a few programs in my youth and, um, a few of them helped and I was able to kind of get cleaned up or sober enough for enough time to go on an LDS mission, um, went on a mission was fine during my mission, came back, and then maybe about within a year of coming back, I started to struggle again, and um, that's when I used a lot of different programs. Um, I went to this, um, I had gone to Sons of Helaman before, I used a program called Sarah Brewer, I used the 12 steps, I used a bunch of programs, um, just they would help, but it didn't quite get the problem, and, and so that's, um, I finally tried hypnotherapy last fall last year yeah and and um so it's been about four months and as far as how bad it was before i used hypnotherapy it would range sometimes i would go um maybe a week or two with no issues other times it would be up to five times a week so it would vary <clears throat> yeah. yeah so during that time that you were struggling during these <clears throat> last several years what were you noticing that that was causing in your life oh it sucked um i mean it, it really affects everything it affects overall discipline self-confidence um you know relationships i had with not only girls i was dating but also just family and friends um confidence spiritually if you're religious you know how i felt before god um and and i just felt overall sluggish you know it takes time out of your life as well so it, it really affects it affected everything yeah definitely yeah so tell me what thoughts you were having given the fact that you had spent all this money and all of these programs and it still wasn't going away what was going through your mind um, to be honest, there was someone in my church group who brought up the fact that they dealt with pornography as well. And, and they essentially said, I've tried everything I can. I realize it's something I'm going to deal with. And I think at times I definitely, I definitely, um, felt something similar. Like I've spent all this time and money and, you know, I think I'm a good person. And, uh, I'll never be perfect. And I have to be, if I have to be perfect to overcome this, it's just not going to work. So I think I was, I would go back and forth between fighting and then, you know, having small moments of maybe this is just what I have to deal with forever. Yeah. 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 A lot of people just resign themselves to the fact that maybe this is like their Abrahamic test, right? It's got to yeah. clear to the end. Uh, yeah. And, and that's, and sometimes that's actually what I've seen a lot of people are told by therapists and, and bishops, Hey, this is just the natural man struggle. This is what you're going to deal with for probably the rest of your life. Right. Yeah. So, all right. <clears throat> so what were you noticing that was triggering you? When were you getting tempted the most? Um, definitely at night. At night, um, <clears throat> I 
probably if times when I had connected and had a lot of interaction with people, if I was really kind of deep into my schoolwork or um, had been alone most of the most of the day, then that night would be really tough. Yeah. Yeah. So what were you thinking when you first came across what I was claiming that we can fix this so simply, so easily, so quickly? What what was going through your head when you saw that? <laughs> um, it it took me a few months, actually, from the moment that I first saw an ad to the moment that I actually contacted you and worked with you. My first thoughts were, um, no way. Uh, and so it, it kind of took time. I, I, you had a book, I read some of the book. Um, you had some online videos I watched, you had Google reviews that went back for actually several years. And so it was small things that, that finally led me to say, okay, let me work with, let me try and, and see what this is about. But at first I thought, no shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Too good to be true, right? <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I uh, did you get the result you were hoping for? Yeah. All yeah, right. It, uh yeah. Or oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no. So so how did you feel about um doing the actual hypnosis? Like did you <clears throat> did you have any reservations about doing the hypnosis? Because a lot of people think this is kind of mind control. And then what was your actual experience? How would you describe that to people so that they're not like weirded out or afraid to do hypnosis? Yeah, I actually um, just had a friend sign up for your program. And so I kind of gave him a heads up of this is what you might expect. And this is what actually happens. But I had heard, I mean, hypnosis, even just the word has some weird ideas associated with it. So definitely mind control or, you know, learning things that, you don't want to learn or stuff like this. Um, my experience, I was aware of everything that was going on. I just felt kind of calm. And I also was apprehensive about maybe it being so painful and terrible to kind of purge myself of these thoughts. Um, it was difficult and sad part of it because they have to go through and find the truth and realize, you know, that, you've been hurting, but, um, it wasn't nearly as bad as they thought it wasn't bad at all. Um, I was aware of everything that was going on. Um, I was the one that was telling myself what was going on. You were, you know, just up there to, you were helping me navigate. Um, that was it. Yeah, it was, it was relaxing and it was calm. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you feel like was maybe something actually very specific to your experience that that clinched it for you it was like the breakthrough that you made it was the thing that you needed to figure out on that deep level that fixed it all for you i think coming to it was my it was eye opening to realize that some of the thoughts that I've been having that I consistently had were not actually me. Um, and that I could be separated from those. Um, one of those thoughts, for example, is that I would feel a lot of loneliness and I felt like this was an escape from loneliness. And so being able to at the subconscious level say, you know, these thoughts are actually not mine. They're not good for me. And I don't need to associate with them. It, it, it makes you, first of all, feel like an incredible person because um, you realize that's not you. And second of all, it kind of frees you. So I think that's that was a big thing is realizing that some of the thoughts that I've been having for years weren't me and I didn't have to be associated with them, and specifically loneliness. Right. Okay, so once you dealt with that, <clears throat> maybe immediately after this session, what were your thoughts, or what what did you start to notice afterwards? Maybe in the, in the right after hours or or days after that. 
Um, I don't know. I felt a little mentally, I think I felt a little mentally tired right after, kind of like in a limbo state. Um, it was weird because I, I did believe that I was over with the problem, but, you know, there's always some slight apprehension of what's what's going to happen but i i said okay i'm going to believe i'm going to have faith and um i think the next 24 or 48 hours sometimes i'd feel a little weird um kind of the hormones and emotions were up and down and then it kind of settled probably within a day or two um and then i felt normal but without any um, inkling to view pornography? Any any thoughts to view pornography? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it's been four months about, you said. And so during this time, has there been times, and I want you to be totally honest, have there been times where you felt like it was a fight for you? Like there was some big urge or motivation or temptation that you were really struggling with and you felt like this this problem was all gonna just come back. Um, I wouldn't say massive, like massive urges, like I would feel before when I was fighting. Um, at times, definitely temptation, but it's a lot. It's much simpler to um, make those go away. They don't really linger, and they don't they don't scare me like they used to. Um, you know, so if the hormones are high or something, I can, you know, I'll reach out to somebody I know, or I'll do this kind of, um, mental reset that takes about 30 seconds. Um, but no, it's not, I think there will always be temptation, but it's not really what it was for. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then one of the things that I like to tell people when, they're wanting to come in as I say, Hey, there's a whole kind of world of therapeutic outcomes that you can get beyond just the sexual or just kind of byproducts that you can start noticing. And so in the last four months, have you noticed anything else that's different about how you act or your self image or your, uh, your day-to-day -day life now that you don't have the problem? Um, yeah, I think, sort of going back to my first point it kind of it affects everything in a positive way so you know at face value i have more free time um but i feel less sluggish generally my sleep is better um i feel more attracted to the girl that i'm dating um i feel more confident i think you know, my mood doesn't go up and down as, as much as it did before. So, uh, school seems to be easier to stay on, on top of. So I think everything's better and it's not like I had a bad life before, but, but right. it's, um, improved in essentially every aspect. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how much mental energy gets taken up even subconsciously by the pornography habit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So what advice would you give to people who are hesitating to come in to try hypnotherapy or just in general, uh, any thoughts that you feel like would be helpful for people to know about? Yeah, I would say at least what really helped me is look, look that, um, you know, Nelson has a legit book out. I would read it. Um, there's actually a, a small clip that you can do a, a super quick therapy session kind of by yourself. I did that as well before meeting with him. Um, you can see that he's got years of Google reviews. So there's, there's evidence that this isn't a scam. Um, and then after that, I would maybe listen to these testimonials and realize what, what uh, actually goes on in the hypnotherapy and realize it's not as weird as, as you thought. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's legit. So. <laughs> awesome well thank you so much for being on i really really appreciate it